So now we're going to continue doing more of the grasses uh, and I'll show you how. But in order to uh, finish or get the grasses that I've already started here, which I'll show you how I did that, um, we'll um, finish the rest of the stonework going around this um, the wall next to the barn doors. So let's tape that just so we don't get it all over everything. I guess I have a thing about edges. I don't know what that is. But anyway, um, so I'm always worried about the edge. And so there we go. We have the edge fixed. Now, again, remember, always different size brush for different size work. And so I will now use a couple different brushes and mix the paint for the wall. We know what the wall is going to look like. We have a feeling I have a little drawing there. And we're going to start painting that. Now remember, we always keep the uh, um, tempera white for mixing. That's for our mixing. So we're going to make sure we put enough of that out. That's the mixing white. The white that comes in the tube, that's for the more opaque applications. Uh, but this you can see through real easy, so um, it becomes translucent. Okay, so let's mix up some stonework. So we'll, we'll start out with, or some stone color. So we'll start out with some um, ultramarine blue. Then we're going to go over to some burnt umber and burnt sienna to warm it up a bit. So we'll have a little sienna in there because now this is in the shade. This is in the sunlight. So we want a little more life on this side than we have on this side. Okay, so we'll get a few more colors mixed. And of course, I always mute. I always try to mute all my colors. Keep them muted. Uh, for some reason, that just seems to work for me. And a little raw sienna. So we have burnt sienna, too, and raw sienna. So now, when I mix these colors, there'll be a mixture of all of that. Okay, so let's start mixing some stone colors, some warm stone color. And so we get some of the white. And we'll get some of the umber and that. And we'll start mixing. But keep it keep it muted. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I just like a muted color. Um, we have enough color in the barn doors, you know, in the barn itself. Then we don't really need it on the rest. So we'll get something like this. Sunlight. Then we'll get a little shaded area. We're going to mix a couple things uh, before we start to paint. So we're kind of keeping it so we have some sunlight, some shading on it, and then we can kind of change direction a little bit on the stone. You know, get a nice, nice little gray in there, nice warm gray, and keep the brush with that paint on it. Keep it charged because we're going to be using some of that. Okay. Now where's my other round? Here. Okay. So either a short haired um, flat or we could use the round, a small round. So now we'll start just wet the brush, get the hairs wet. And then we'll get some of this in, you know, put some of this in. So now we're going to start. It has kind of a an edge that comes kind of down like this. We don't have to worry about that um, grass there because I'll straighten that out. We'll straighten it. We'll fix all that up. So we come down, get some of this. And then we have a big hunk coming down this way. Big hunk of rock here. And big hunk of rock over there. 
And all we're doing is we're giving it some kind of direction, you know, on this. All right, so that it, it has a feeling of the sunlight on like the surface parts of it. See, the, the parts that are the surface of the stone. Okay, a little bit there. Now, now we'll get the same brush again. And we'll put in some of the shade. Well, it's not really the shade. What it really is, it's the sunlight, but it's where the rock kind of changes direction a little bit. So we're going to get some of that in there. And let's, let's make that a little higher. And then here we have a face. Uh, let's rock face here. And if we get some of this, you see how when I put this color in, we get all of this kind of uh, brush marks and strokes and things. That's okay. It's stone. This is a painted surface. Some guy was painting it, and then somebody ran into it with a tractor or whatever, and so things happened. But here, the stone, stuff, other stuff happened. Uh, it was growing uh, stuff, and grass was growing, and rain came, fell all over it, and so it changed it. And so that's why we get all of these different things happening to it. And now we go to the the gray. So let's keep a get a little gray in there. So we have a little stone up in here. We have something happening down in there. See? Now the sunlight, remember, is coming from the left. So we're this face is lit, this face isn't with sunlight. Okay, so even the rocks have facets. Um, and so we want to mark those facets where that is turning, you know, and has some kind of a direction. And these are kind of a rough, because what we're laying in here is just a rough surface yet first. And see how when it goes, it bleeds. Let it bleed through. It's okay if it bleeds. It's not going to hurt anything if it bleeds. That's, that's, we learn how to handle that. With gouache, you learn how to handle that bleed. And because it is gouache, you can go back and you can soften that edge. See, uh, you, this, unless you do it right away with acrylic, you can't do that with acrylic. But you can do it with this. You can go right away. Even if it dries completely, uh, you still can go back and touch it up. So some places are going to be smoothed out or softened. Some places are going to be hard. Things happen. Right? As is the famous line, things happen. Now we're going to get kind of a round because we're going to start putting in some of the uh, shade. I mean the shadow, not the shade. We did the shade. Now we got the shadow. So we're going to get kind of a dark color, but keep it warm. So again, a mixture of our blue and our... And we're not putting the white in it this time, notice? Yeah. Yeah, no, no white. This time, this is going to be completely something else. So now, back here, the stone has a shape where it's coming from this face. That's the shadow over there, see? And then it comes up over this stone, see? And this stone is going back. And we can blend some of that as we go. And then there are different things where this stone comes up and it meets with the other place, the other stone. So we're gonna, not a lot, not a lot, we don't want a lot, just
just enough to kind of accent it. See it? Mm -hmm. And then here too. We're going to give some accent. And then this is going to go back, kind of like that. And this whole stone here. And we don't want that to be exactly the same. So we'll come here and we'll kind of give that a face like that. Another one here, which is for that one. And then just stone and stone. Now, so we basically have the shape. Now we go back in with a wet brush and we start to drag some of that around. See? Just start dragging some of that around. Don't get too spotty. You know, drag some of that. Give it a kind of a softness, a shadow, a length, a shape. And that's basically what you're doing. You're going around rocks and you're making a stone wall. Some tight spots and some places that are not so tight. See? This rock up here. And then rocks have things happening right on the surface of them. See, so if sometimes when I mix it sometimes I don't get the right shape so maybe I'll make a shape I'll give it a shape I'll give it a direction I'll see something happening there and I'll give it a face you know I'll over accent that and it makes it more real it starts to take on now it's the same rock as this side only this wall is crumbling a little. Again, don't get it too spotty looking. And you just keep on working that. Some of this will disappear down into that. And especially on this side. Because this... This has to go into this. This has this wall has to bleed into this. So we have it has to relate. So again, we're going to keep this kind of smooth here. Kind of blending that. Blending here. The more you drag the brush. Now down here, it's kind of disappearing down around all of the grass that's now growing here. Okay, so, now we're going to give it some accent now. Now we're going to accent that a bit. Now, here's the color that we will use for mixing, right? It bleeds more. See, this is the color you use for mixing. So if I put, let's put a little on and see what happens. See, we can give a nice little, uh, this we can give the face of the rock to give the direction of the face. So this rock is kind of laying this way. So we'll have things kind of going like this on that rock. See? Then there's a little chip over here on the other side. And so we'll give it that feeling. This one is kind of laying flat in here. So we're going to come across this way. And then the same way with this one. This one we already did. It's coming across this way. This one's coming down. This one could either be vertical or horizontal. And what we're doing is accenting some of the shape. And we don't want it to... We don't want the stone, uh, the white, to dominate yet. Oh, look. Now I got a drop of paint on there. So we'll go like this. And dra drag it around a little bit. Oh, and guess what? Oh, it looks nice. <laughs> See? It we can actually mess with that and make a nice little rock out of it or something. So don't worry about that. Those things happen. Now, we'll come in. 
Now watch the difference when you use the uh, tube white, the white from the tube. It's a little different. And that was the mixing white. That's the temper white. This is the gouache temper white. Okay, so now let's see what happens with that. And again, we're still working on our rocks. So we'll get the gouache temper white now, which we're going to use in a little while over here. So right down here in the corner, we got a little light dropping off the end. Okay, a little light just hit the end, and it did something. And then there's a little bit of light catching that one edge. And even up here, there's some. And definitely over here. And this has some bleed, but not a lot. So you don't overdo it. Don't overuse it. Now, in order to make it, we have to still make that r relate to everything. This looks like stuff la stacked on top of one another, but it really isn't. But we're going to just start making some breaks and some breaks. Because this, what had happened was this wall fell on this end, fell down a little. So we're just going to kind of relate it but not fully. See, it's, it's going to relate that that's a broken section. And then we may want to, just because of the fact that we're, we have these colors that we worked out here, right? All of these colors. Well, we want to put some of that color in here. Let's put some of that color so it relates in these stones here. See? and some of these things that are happening here, the rocks that were the previous ones. You want that all to relate. You don't want it to be a dead spot. You want that to start to relate. And again, notice this paint dried. Did you notice? Yeah. And yet, look, I'm able to pick up a bunch of it. And it's alive again. Yeah, and it's alive. It's alive. But there, see, we can put some things happening with it, make it gray. Just, I'm just trying to kill some of that big black area. Make it relate, but it's in shadow. And then anything we don't like, it's too harsh, we can just rub the brush over it and pull some of that away. Leave some, leave some blended places and some not blended. It works. It's a nice combination. But deciding where it should be and where not, uh, that's another whole interesting thing. Now, so basically that's enough. We have enough rock there to... Um, work with. I think we have, we don't want to overdo that. Now we're going to get into, and I used again the tape. I'm always using tape. And now we're going to talk about the grass because the grass is important. And I'm going to tape two ends because I'm going to do both the corners at the same time. So I have this corner which I just put a little paint in there. That's all I did, basically. And, and I'll show you that, how I did that. So I'm just taping both corners to make it interesting. These are interesting places. And then this. And we have that. And we're going to take this corner, take this corner away. All right, so now we don't have any white on the page, paper except up in the sky there. So we're ready to go. All right, so how do we do 
the what do we do as far as we'll move this this is for our rocks i'm going to get over here to our grass that's our grass palette okay so i actually I actually cleaned it uh, it had other this is the mixing white and again here's the white that we'll use for highlighting but we'll not use that yet okay now what colors do we mix to make our to make green what is it fundamental yellow and blue yeah yellow and blue that makes it that does it so we get a little bit of our ultramarine I like to mix my own greens these are all my own greens my, my own grass colors and stuff like that myself a little tiny bit of the burnt the no the uh, raw uh, burnt sienna and raw sienna I want both this time for this and you say what this is grass wait a minute yeah, this is all grass and umber. Put some umber in there. Need umber. Okay. And let's put a little tiny bit of the, uh, well, I really don't think we need the yellow that much. Uh, so we're going to stay away from the yellow because we have um, ochre, yeah. and that is yellow ochre. So we have enough. It'll be green enough. We don't want to be too green. Now I have enough green here that I can go over this and still retain. It has to all relate. The grass kind of things change and happen and whatever. And let's so let's get into mixing some of what we'll we'll do here. So here we have. Let's let's keep it nice and light. Let's go for the light stuff. I already put a base here. Now I'm going to come in with the same value. The same value. See? We're working towards the same. We're going to try and get the same value. But we're changing the color. Notice? Yeah. And I got my tree brush. Or my, some people say it's a grass, grass brush. And how that works, see, all it is is a flat. Let's take some of that paint off there first. All it is is a flat like this that has been, when you use a flat, you use it like this, right? You use it like this and like this, like this. But... You don't do this with it. That, that will wreck your brush. Well, that's what this is. This is a wrecked flat because you go against it. So you can make your own by constantly doing that until you get it to look like that. It starts to separate. That's what you want for a tree brush. You want it to separate the hairs like that into little groups. See? Then you take some of it off, and notice we have little things happening. So if I were to put it close but not touch, just barely touch, it does that. But when you do it this way, you kind of get feelings of things. See? Things happen. And grass changes. It's not all in the same direction. So it's the same way. So we're going to do that. But here, this application, we're trying to... We, we want this as our ground color. The ground. When I say ground, I don't mean the dirt. I mean a ground for my paint. So this, this green is the ground that I'm putting this grass on top of. So I'm building this 
And because it's the same value, what happened? You can't see it that well. Because it's the same value. But you'll start to notice a change in the color, not in the value. The value is very similar. See how that is? Yeah. And that's what I want. I'm changing the color, but I still have the ground. Because when you use this white, the mixing white, that tempera, it causes, it makes it translucent. Okay, so this, this is like a little hill here. This is the stone wall that broke down. And what they do is they'll drive some of their equipment out of here and up this hill and then or out into this field or into the other field over that way and or this way and so this is like a because of the lay of the land when they built the barn it was like that so you can try to retain some of the ground but it's really not necessary to retain the ground uh, we we will automatic automatically because it's so translucent this paint will retain some of it let's see it yeah it's starting to come out and you're starting to see a color change see it there's oh, yeah. a color change the, the color is starting to change now become more earthy as opposed to that green, because sometimes uh, when we work on a painting, I think that might be a little too green, but it's good for the application right now. But we don't want to get so green that it's um, it becomes sickening. <laughs> we don't we don't want to make it sickening, a sickening green. That's that wouldn't be a good green. Because grass is beautiful. So now. Now we're going to relate it now to this grass, to this wall. So we're going to start. When the marks we're making here, some of them are going to stay. So we got to be careful here what we're putting. Because these are going to stay. And we don't want to fill it up too much. But we want some grass. Okay, so... And we have something happening there and, and some things over there. And sometimes I find twisting the brush will help because you never know what grass does. It does funny stuff. Okay, now we have that ground. Now, the grass grows in clumps. I know people say, I don't know, I don't think it grows, it does, it grows in clumps. Any person that knows gardening knows that it grows in clumps and they wish it didn't because it's a pain, but it yeah. grows in clumps. So we want to now accent those clumps, okay? Because we've already built the ground where we had the one green and then we had that other kind of earthy color on top of it, a neutral. And now we're going to put in some of the dark. See what, what I've done here in the same ways. See these little things that are happening here? See all these little areas? These little clumpy areas? Okay, that's what I'm going to do here now. And the same way here. Some of it, and, and how you regulate it how you want the lay of the land, how how it's going to look is how your painting is going to be. So now's the time to start. If you're gonna if you haven't been thinking up to now, you should start right about now. Now sometimes I turn the painting. Now's the time to start really considering what we're putting down on the ground. So we're gonna start clumping and getting some things to work because I'm working on an edge. This is I'm so I'm being mindful of a couple of things here. I'm being mindful that I have a an edge 
that I want to in my picture that has to work and to be natural with the grass. And if you notice, once in a while I get some dots. That's okay. There's dots sometimes on the ground, believe it or not. I've seen them. And we're going to just keep on putting some of these. And don't be afraid. We can get it right, going right across our grass. And get some of that clumping. And work it in the grass kind of color. I mean, the, uh, uh, the way the grass is growing. You know, that's not saying you're going like this. Because uh, unless the lawn is manicured, then and you have something that looks like this all along the ground, it's going to have little movements and darks and lights and dots and stuff happening. And so you want to put some of that in there. Not as much up here. And every once in a while, something is straight. And it all starts to relate. Not too haphazard. You want it to relate to one another. You know, these things, sometimes you'll notice I'll try to connect them in some way, in some direction. It's not just you know, some here, some here, some here, some here, that you want to avoid that. You want it to grow in a natural way, relating to one another. So here we have that. Okay. Now we go to the next step. You say, boy, there's an awful lot of steps with grass. Isn't there? Wow. Very complicated. Yeah. But... Boy, does it look good when you're done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starts to look really nice. So we'll get some more stuff. And I like the raw color sometimes. And we'll get some of the chalkiness in there. Some people say, well, doesn't that white make it kind of chalky? Yeah, it does. And that gives it a misty kind of a atmospheric kind of a thing. You know, it's better. That's a good thing. And as far as the consistency of the water, uh, your water on your brushes and stuff, that is something that you have to feel out yourself, you know, to get the feeling of how that will be. Okay, so now the clumps have tops to the clumps. Okay, so now we got to relate some of this stuff. And it's very close in value, but again, color. That's where it changes. Okay, so. And once in a while, you pass over that. what you've already done. Not too much. But kind of get this color in there. Because this color has to relate to that color. I oh, gotcha. Yeah. But not, not, the. it's closer to the ground here. And see, you're going over the clumped area. See it? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's that part of it. Now we go to the next spot. And we could just almost guess. We get lighter now. But don't go too wild with the light. You don't want it too, too much of little white things lay, you know, around. Don't do that. That's, that's worse. That will only make it worse. You don't want too much. You want some of it. And you don't want it to, you want it to relate to one another, but without being um, too, too different. It, it has to relate. So we got grass here. This is the top of the clump. 
So I'm filling in the area on top of the clump, see? And I'm going down towards the clump. See? That's, that's what we're doing. We're kind of filling it in. Now see, when you get something like that, you don't want that, but just make that relate a little bit, and then you can come back and work on that. And again, if you get this dotting looking stuff, that's okay. There are all kinds of things that grow on bushes. Okay, so now, and I got it in a direction. Notice I kept, kept most of my grass in a direction. Yeah. That's just something that I do. Why do I do it? I don't know. I just do that. Sometimes I'll have it going. And the real way grass grows is if you look out here, 